I'm George Pearson and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements video, we're going to take this faded photograph here. You can see a lot of problems, a lot of fading in the dark areas, even kind of a red tint, or as the blue is fading out. You can see a bit of blue here, but even that's going a little bit more to the purple. So we've lost some blue, we've lost some color. We're going to fix this and make it look like that right there. So we're going to do some adjustments and repair or restore this picture. And this is the actual original photograph. I found this on a free image website just like this and the link is in the description. You can get that if you want to download the actual picture and follow along with those. Okay, let's go ahead now and see how this whole process is done. I'm going to just delete all of my working layers here and go right back to the original. So there it is. There's the basic image that we're starting off with. Now there's several things we need to do. We need to bring more color into this. We need to increase our saturation in the dark areas here. We've really lost a lot in the black areas. And we need to get rid of that red tint in there as well and bring in some more contrast. All of that can be done by kind of building up to this over several steps. The first step though is to try to bring back some of the overall colors in here, the overall color saturation. So let's make a copy of this background layer, drag it up to the new layer button just like that. There we go. And we'll bring back some color in here by blending this into the background layer. So go up here to the blending modes and come down to overlay. And that just adds in colors from here into the background. Now we still have more red. It also increased that red area in there. We can do a little trick on that to try to minimize some of that red at this point. We'll do more of that a little later on, but we'll do a little quick one here. Take this same overlay. I'm going to rename these layers here. This is the overlay blending mode right there. Let's duplicate that and then change the blending mode here to saturation. Now what that does, as you can see here, it really just kind of gets rid of that red. You know, a lot of the red, it just pulls that out. I'm not sure exactly why saturation does it. I found that just by experimentation. The same thing happens if you use color as well. Either one of these, saturation or color, comes in and just kind of pulls out some of that red value. So there we go. That's what we're using on here. Let me just rename this one. That's my saturation layer. Now, we still have a problem that we're looking pretty good here on the car. It's pretty close, but we don't have a lot of values in our blacks. The blacks are still really, really faded in there. So I want to really punch up the blacks. And we'll do that with another layer. So I'll grab this saturation layer, drag it up here to the new layer button again. Now this one is going to be color burn. There we are. Now it's going to look strange when I do this. So it's a blending mode and color burn. You can see what it does is it burns in the colors, but it burns them in mostly in the dark areas. The dark have gone really, really black. It looks real cartoonish, obviously, but we have brought our blacks in again. So I need to tone that down. And we can do that by adjusting the opacity. Bring the opacity back, and it tones that down a bit. Now I have mine set on this picture to 24 I thought that worked out pretty well. 24, maybe 25. That's how much darker 25 is than 24. There's quite a quite a big shift in there. So there's our opacity. I'll leave it at 25. Looks pretty good. So a color burn layer. Now we're still not quite there yet. We're not quite dark enough in here still. So I want to, to punch up my blacks a little bit more. I don't want to do much on the rest of the picture though. So I can't do a blending mode again with a whole layer. I need to minimize that and only work on my dark areas. And we can do that with an adjustment layer. So layer, 
new adjustment layer right here and let's go for levels the top option I normally go for this one when I need to adjust levels in a picture now normally I'll check this and I'll leave it set to create a clipping mask which in effect makes this work on just the layer underneath but I want this working on all of my layers so make sure that that's unchecked and choose OK there we go now on this one I can darken my darks by pulling the left side control over and I can bring in the darks notice how the gray the midtone kind of adjusts overall on the picture but I just care about the, the darks really in here you can punch the lights up just a little bit by pulling the right side in now the one that I found works well the setting I used for my example there was 28 on the black and I used 245 on the right hand side I think maybe just a little just a touch more on the black maybe 32 is a little bit better on the black okay so there's our, our levels now we still have that red tint in here I want to get rid of that red tint we can do that with another adjustment layer so back up here to layer new adjustment layer this time we're going to be going for hue and saturation again leave this unchecked ignore that that's going to be hidden in just a second and it's replaced there with the hue saturation now I want to get rid of the red values and I can do that here notice we can change the color values here the saturation and the lightness and you have different channels this is where you can adjust your color values let's go to reds and I want to bring down the saturation on the red I can actually pull red out of the picture by pulling this to the left I can put in more red or less red so I'll pull out some red now the setting that I used on my example was minus 46 left just a little bit of red in there which is fine and just kind of darkens that down and pulls that red out so it looks looks more natural now I want a little more overall color in here I've lost some color in the greens in there now you could if you want to come into your greens and you can increase your saturation on your greens a bit try to bring in some green not really seeing a whole lot on that though surprisingly enough so that may not be the green channel let's try the yellow channel there you go there's more yellow in there than green so I'll bring the yellows up just a little bit it's mostly in the back right in there we're seeing that and then I'll go to the master and I'll bring the whole picture up just a little bit on saturation as well there we go so some slight adjustments on those so I'm going to set the saturation at 20 for the master for the whole picture and for the yellows we have the saturation at plus 17 and for the reds we had it at minus 46 to pull the red out this one I brought the master up we gained a little bit of red back in the car again here that's fine because you want to have some red in there obviously we still want to have it overpowering the image so there we go there is our fixed and adjusted picture and they can compare that pretty easily by just you know grabbing one of these layers making a duplicate of it and then clicking back and forth but let me show you a different method to do this you can put them side by side click on your top layer hold the shift button down click on the background layer so they're all selected just like that everything is selected now go up to select and all and look for those little marching ants around the outside so the whole picture is selected now go up to edit and copy merged what this does is it copies all the layers merged together as one layer so copy merged there we are we can now go to a file and new blank file and set this at document type clipboard what this is is what we just copied that's the actual size we copied it's on the clipboard choose OK there is our new floating file and we can then go edit paste and it pastes that in as one layer you can see it right there so there's our finish in its own image there we are just kind of floating right here and then in the background I can hide all those I'm just going to deselect everything here first deselect there it is and let's hide all of our work so there is the original right there and there's our finish I'm going to float this window pull the window down let it float like that so you can see these better 
and I'll put it right about here and let's move that over. So there we go. There's the original and here's the fixed with those several layers. Now if you don't know how to float a window like this, I have a video all about how to do this and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So there you go. Here's our original and here is our fix. Now one of the nice things about using this technique, let me just put this back where it was, with all of these separate layers is that you can now fine tune this if you want to. I can, for instance, I can adjust my color burn. If I think it's just a little bit too much, I can back off on the color burn a little bit. Or I can tone down one of these other layers in here. Or I can come back and I can control the colors. Just double click on the icon, brings it back up, and you can then double click or adjust your different settings in here. So separating this out to these several different layers that are doing specific things allows you that ability to go back and fine tune your image and get it exactly the way you want to. And you probably have to do that. If you're taking this out to a print, it's going to print a little bit differently than you're seeing on screen. Prints are always different than your screen output. And you may want to come back and make some little adjustments in here so that it looks right on the print. So again, that's why we have all these separate layers because you have more control when you're working. And there you go. That is how to take the image. And let's just look at that one last time. There's the original and there's our improved and repaired version. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can.